Uh, Larry Levine is with us. He served 10 years in a federal lockup and went on his own to start his own company. Uh, it's called Wall Street Prison Consultants, and Barry and his shades are live with us this afternoon. Larry, it's nice to see you. Glad to be here with you. You know, it's my understanding that nobody in this prison facility in the Panhandle even contacted those who supposedly signed off on these documents, but of course didn't sign off on them. They were forgeries. Well, they wouldn't have to. They got an order that came down from the court, but they're supposed to verify with the court clerk to ensure the documents are real. But if they had, it would have come back validated anyway. So as far as I can tell, the Florida DOC followed procedure. This, this to you looks like an inside job, you've said. It would have to be an inside job. More than likely, a, a paralegal, a lawyer, somebody with knowledge on the outside created these documents. They forged them, put the seal on them, then somebody at the courthouse inserted them into a stack of other documents. So they did an end run, and then the paperwork just got distributed normally to where it would go anyway. So it went to the Florida Department of Corrections. They then sent it to the prison, giving them the order to release. And at that point, the prison should validate it with the court. Then the people are free to leave. Shouldn't this have gone to the appeals court? No, this was a post-conviction type of thing. It's a habeas corpus. In other words, an appeal, you're appealing something that had already happened. A habeas corpus, what they used, a, a collateral attack post-conviction, you're going back into court and what you're doing is presenting new evidence. You're bringing new issues to the court to rule on. So get, that goes back to the district court. And in this case, they created the motion. The court apparently reviewed it. Somebody issued an order, yes, this is granted, and then in turn, that's when the phony paperwork started making its way through the court system and inevitably to the, to the prison. Your, your background and, and insight on this is an interesting one. You, you were in the system for 10 years as an inmate, and, and as a result, you, you seem to know a bit about how this thing works or frankly doesn't work. Well, when I was in a federal prison in Texas, Latuna Federal Prison, El Paso, Texas, I was kind of a jailhouse lawyer, jailhouse litigator, and I had inmates that actually had outstanding state detainers on them and warrants. And what I was doing is drawing up legal motions to the court, asking the court to either dismiss their sentence or run their state sentence concurrent with their federal sentence. Well, my paperwork looked so good, and I did this in the law library, followed all the procedures that we sent a copy of it to the court and then we sent a copy of it to the prison telling them we were doing this. Well, the court saw the documents and actually took the paperwork I created and removed the warrants and detainers off these people. So the people would have been free to go, but inevitably somebody found out that this happened and they tried to get me in trouble saying I violated law, I forged documents, and I said no, I followed policy. You people need to be a little more on the ball with what you're reading and understand the documents. And that's a big problem. There's so many different types of court documents from so many different courts that hit the prison. Nobody really knows what they're reading. Mm. Larry Levine with an eye opener of a take on the prison system. Larry, it's nice to see you live from Los Angeles. Thanks. Glad to be with you. All right.